Donovan, want to start with you on this, obviously, as our former quarterback on the show. How badly did the Bills mess this whole thing up? It messed this up. I mean, it's all it's awful at this particular point. It sets the franchise back because to me, when I, I look at this decision being made, what did you see during practice or training camp that made you feel like he was ready to go? Tyrod Taylor was not playing that bad. Now, he played, played bad against the New Orleans Saints. But if you look at the Jets game, he put up great numbers, protect the football, his QB rating was high, and all season, low in interceptions, and, and not as high in touchdowns, because if you look across the board, his wide receiving core is not that good. If you have to go out and trade for Kelvin Benjamin to come in and try to help at the wide receiving position where you were last from the production from your wide receivers, that should tell you something going forward. Then you make the decision to go with this young man, which they thought coming out of Pittsburgh that he had high potential. Same thing could be said about Tom Savage that's in Houston. Haven't seen anything positive happen for that young man down there. So for me, now all of a sudden you go back to Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, which I want to commend being a professional of being prepared and going out there and playing ball in tough circumstances, but still being able to try to show that he's a starter quarterback in this league. This is something that's been a problem for me over the last few years, even when I played. It seems like they're looking and expecting way too much out of a lot of African-American quarterbacks. And when they're not getting it, all of a sudden he's looking like a 22, 25-year-old out there playing, then they feel like, let's go to the pocket passer. And then all of a sudden the guy they put out there looks like garbage. And then now you look back and say, well, we can always go back to Tyrod Taylor. No, that's not what, the, what this situation is. And for me, the Buffalo Bills have made a, a bad decision that's going to cost them, not this season, but at least the next couple seasons to go. Um, I want to refer again to the Daily News article by Chuck Modiano from uh, November 14th. Great White Hope QB Awards. Tyrod Taylor and how white privilege works in the NFL. There's obviously a racial component to this. There's no... The point of the article, if I had to sum it up, as I said last week, is there's no black Blake Bortles in the NFL. That African-American quarterbacks are not given the same second, third, and fifth, and eighth chances. If someone says Michael Vick, by the way, Michael Vick attained a very high level, was a high draft pick, the whole thing. Um, we're talking about, like, the Ryan Fitzpatrick types, right? Like, where are those guys among African-American quarterbacks? Even a guy like Rich Gannon got so many chances. He became an excellent quarterback. And Tyrod Taylor, I thought, touched on that when the benching occurred. Look. The, the Bills screwed this up because a lot of your quarterback is your branding. There isn't, right. the, you know, there, there are the franchise quarterbacks who are clearly excellent. Then there are starting quarterbacks. And the difference between those guys sometimes and the, and the bench guys who sometimes start the bubble quarterbacks, as I call them, the bubble starters, are, is perception. And now you've taken a guy who you once wanted to pay like a franchise quarterback, right? You thought maybe he could be that. And you've turned he went to a starter. And maybe he's not even starter quality. Maybe he is just bubble starter. But that's certainly the brand now. I think there's the confluence of that, the racial component of it that people aren't even really aware of, right? Because, and draft position, if you're a sixth round pick, it's not like you get the same number of chances if you're a first round pick. Um, so there's certainly that, but there's also wish casting. You know, franchises, they wish their guy was the guy. And then after enough time, you go, maybe he's not the guy. I don't think right. Tyrod Taylor's great. I think he's okay. He has, like any guy who's not a franchise quarterback but is a starter, he has stretches where you're like, maybe he can do it, and then he's just not consistent enough. I get that. So you start wishing maybe you can find the, a better guy somewhere on your roster. And then the backup plays, who's the most popular guy in the city until he plays, and then you see why he's the backup. Then right. they might go get a guy off a scrap heap, right? That guy doesn't have a very long leash either because you got him off the scrap heap. You don't really believe in him so the real issue for Buffalo more than anything else is they don't have a really good quarterback and that includes Tyrod Taylor but he's the best of what they got and they seem to have botched that too here is the reality of the situation one of my friends said it best when we were watching the game yesterday he said a white quarterback comes in with a full ledger and has to prove he can't get it done right the black quarterback comes in with an, e an empty ledger and has to prove that he can. That's the difference. One could argue it's everywhere in America. Um, it's one of the reasons why times are so divisive as we speak right now, because of that dichotomy that exists, that schism, that divide that exists. Because you have one, one segment of our society 
that plays with a full ledger and you have to prove you can't while you have somebody with an empty ledger that has to prove that they can over and over and over again. You raised in a black family, one of the things that's religiously taught to you is that you have to be twice as good to get half as much. It's right. unfair, but it is what it is. We believe that in the world of sports, that it is the closest thing to a meritocracy that we have in this nation. And then we witness what happens with Tyrod Taylor, and it's sad. But let me tell you what's sadder. This wasn't just Sean McDermott's decision. From what no. I've been told, there were players that had absolutely no problem with, with, with Sean McDermott making this move. Tyrod Taylor completing yeah. better than 63% of his passes, having only thrown three touchdowns on a year. You have folks saying that, you know what, he's too slow reading through his progression Most and all of this other stuff. I'm just telling yeah. you, this is what they're saying. And so when you look at it from that perspective, we can sit up there and point to Sean McDermott because the buck stops with him. He is the coach, and we get that. But make no mistake about it, there were players in that locker room who happened to be black that did not mind him going to Peterman. And what were they saying? Fifth round pick. This guy had a good training camp. He had a good preseason. You know, he has good practices. Let's give him a chance. And in two weeks, you are outscored 104 to 34. Yesterday, 54 to 24. Embarrassed in the first half. This dude threw five touchdown passes, five interceptions in his first 15 passes. Only Archie Manning in the 1973. Four in his first eight. It, it, in just, his first it, eight, 50 percent were interceptions. It was, it was, it was horrendous of epic proportions. So what should we learn from all of this? Maybe, just maybe, some some patience should be exercised so, when it comes to an African American quarterback. Dare I say?